Welcome to Agriculture Academy, where we show you how to start a profitable business in agriculture. Remember to like and subscribe so that you never miss out on any new videos. In this video we are going to take a look at how plant breeders develop new rose cultivars. Let's get started. When developing new cultivars, breeders select favorable characteristics in the parent plants. Some of these qualities may include resistance to pests and disease. Plant productivity. Ease of timing for market planning around holidays like Valentine's Day and Mother's Day. Increased flower size and stem length. Flower aroma, and a longer vase life. Once the parent plants have been selected, the flowers are cross-pollinated in the spring. This is often done by hand where the breeder transfers pollen from the one plant to the stigma of another. The pollen will germinate on the stigma and move down the style, allowing the sperm cells to fertilize the ovule. The fertilized flower then develops into a rose hip. This is the rose fruit and it is harvested once the shell turns red or a deep orange. Rose hips contain six achenes. An achene is made up of a hard pericarp and a true seed. Once the achenes have been removed from the rose hips, they need to germinate. Firstly, the breeder will scarify the achene, which can be done by gently rubbing some sandpaper over its surface. The achenes are then layered on sphagnum peat moss for two weeks at 20 degrees Celsius. After two weeks, the achenes need to be vernalized. Vernalization refers to the manner in which seeds are treated with very cold temperatures. This is often required to break dormancy in seeds so they can begin to germinate. The achenes are vernalized for three to four weeks at temperatures of about 4 degrees Celsius. After vernalization, the achenes are exposed to temperatures of between 16 to 21 degrees Celsius to trigger germination. Once the seeds have grown into young seedlings, they must be transplanted into a well-aerated mix. Aeration is important for roses because they are extremely sensitive to disease in waterlogged conditions. Once the seedlings have matured, they are multiplied by budding. This is a process where single buds are removed from the new cultivar and grafted onto a rootstock cultivar. These budded plants are then studied for their flowering, disease resistance and growth habits for example. The breeder will conduct many tests to determine which crossing combinations produce the finest cultivars. Finally, after the breeder has selected the best cultivars, they are named and patented. The patents often only last six years. All growers producing patented cultivars need to purchase rights or pay a commission to the developers. After the patent has expired however, this is not necessary. This is why roses can be so expensive, because the breeder has to make enough of a return to make the time and money invested on cultivar development worthwhile. And that brings us to the end of our video on rose cultivar development. We hope you learned something new and enjoyed our video. See you next time.